Welcome to LHA Church. You're about to hear another inspirational message from Pastor Jerry Galloway, lead pastor here at Lighthouse Assembly. It's our prayer that this message is an encouragement and blessing to your life. Well, if you have your Bibles this morning with you, if you'll take them out, and if you'll turn with me this morning to the book of 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians. Thank you, Tom. 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter is where we're going to head and spend our time together this morning. This morning I want to take a few minutes and uh, I want to talk to you today about eternity. Each person who has ever been born is an eternal being. We have a physical body, but we also have a spirit that will live forever. Now, our physical body has an expiration date. How many of you, as you live life and you get older and older, you get a greater understanding there's an expiration date on the body? There's things you feel today you didn't feel five years ago. There's things that you experience that you didn't experience when you were 20 years old. Our bodies simply don't last forever. But friend, though we have a physical man, a physical body that's dying our inner man our spirit man lives for anyone who's ever been born listen friend your body may die but you will never cease to exist when we think back to men and women of old abraham moses yes their physical bodies died but their spirit is still very alive we even look back in our history Presidents that have gone, George Washington, our first president, his physical body died, but his spirit man continues to live in eternity. Abraham Lincoln, though he was assassinated in the physical, his spirit man continues on. Those of us who have loved ones who have died, their physical body, their physical man may have died this earthly tent. But their spirit continues to live in eternity. Now, we understand and we most readily talk about the fact that physical death is the door that leads to eternity. And the truth is every one of us will have to walk through that door at some point. And because of that truth, there are many people who put off the decision to be ready for eternity because they think, well, I've got time. The truth is not one of us in this room is planning on dying today. But, my friend, there's no guarantee you and I'll be here next Sunday. So often we put off thinking, well, I've got time because I'm in good health or maybe things are going well in my life. And so I put off those things not considering eternity is just around the corner. This morning, I want us to consider for a few moments another door that leads to eternity. This one is not determined by our physical health or even death itself. This door this morning we're going to consider is the rapture of the church. It's important that we understand what the Bible has to say about the rapture of the church because it is an event that will change the known world. For the reality is Jesus Christ could come at any moment. Could you say amen to that? Jesus Christ could come at any moment, any day, any time. And preparation in light of our death is important. But we must live our lives every day. Ready to meet Jesus. Because the Bible says Jesus can come at any hour. For those who might be here today and you don't understand what the rapture is. This passage we're going to look at in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 is probably one of the most descriptive passages in all of the Bible concerning the rapture of the church. 1 Thessalonians 4, look there with me if you will. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 13 through 18. Brothers and sisters... We don't want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death. 
so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Our basis for this morning, we're going to stay in this passage in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18, but the, the basis of our uh, thought this morning in the passage will be verse number 17 this morning where the apostle says these words, after that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Now, when we're talking about the rapture of the church, we're talking about an instantaneous disappearance of millions upon millions of people from planet Earth. It's an event this world has never seen before. The Bible frequently mentions this event. Jesus said in Luke chapter 12 and verse 40, you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Jesus is telling us that his coming could be at any moment, any day, any time. Friend, the rapture of the church could take place today, tomorrow, next week, next month. We don't know when it's happening, but we know it's soon. Jesus reiterated those words in John 14, verses 1 through 3. He said, don't let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me that you also may be where I am. Jesus said, I'm coming back for my followers. I'm coming back for those who love me. And I'm preparing a place now for you. And when that place is done, I'm going to come and get you. And we're going to be together forever. The heavenly bridegroom is preparing the house for the bride. And one of these days when the bridegroom finishes up the house, he's going to call for the bride. And he's going to call us from the four corners of the earth. And with a loud command, friends, we're going to rise up from this earth and we're going to spend eternity with Jesus the heavenly bridegroom forever back for you 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 to 52 the apostle says listen I tell you a mystery we will not all sleep but we'll all be changed in a flash in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. The Apostle Paul in this fourth chapter of 1 Thessalonians is teaching so that they, and they being the church at Thessalonica, might understand this truth, and as well that you and I gathered together in this room in August of 2017, that we too might have an understanding about this event known as the rapture of the church. Paul said in verse 13, brothers and sisters, we don't want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you don't grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. 
Now, when he refers to sleep in death, right off the right from the beginning, I want to give some explanation there. When he talks about those who are sleeping in death, he is not talking about soul sleeping as some might believe. Because the truth is, the spirit or the soul of man never sleeps. It's always awake and it's always alert. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5, to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Jesus also in Luke 18 talked about the rich man and Lazarus. They both died and they were both very conscious and aware of their surroundings in eternity. The soul does not sleep. But the body, when we lay it in the ground, we say this phrase, we're laying them to rest. But for the believer in Christ, friend, there's coming a day when the body is going to be awakened and it's going to be risen brand new in Jesus Christ. The body may be at rest, but the soul never stops and never comes to a season of rest. This morning, I want us to look at a few things. First of all, I want us to look at a scriptural basis for the rapture. Because friends, we've got to be able to go back to the word of God. The truth is, if this is his plan, we need to know what his plan is. Frankly, for you, it really doesn't matter what I think about this issue. What it matters is about what the word of God teaches and tells us is going to happen. So let's take a few minutes this morning and let's look at a scriptural basis for the rapture. We're going to go back to verse number 13. Brothers and sisters, he's talking to the church. He's talking to the church in a city called Thessalonica. He says, brothers and sisters, we don't want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. And he's, what he's saying here is we want you to understand about those who've died. Those who you have buried, those loved ones and friends that you have buried, uh, we don't want you to be uninformed about what's going to happen to those individuals. Those who've died and knew the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Friends, as believers today, yes, our hearts grieve for our loss. And the truth is, friend, those of you who have lost loved ones that are close to you, you understand what it is to grieve for that loss. But friends, listen to me this morning. We grieve for our loss, not their loss. They've gained it all. So therefore, we don't grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. You see, most, for most of this world today, when someone dies, they believe this life is all there is to it. So at the funeral, at the funeral system it really is a final goodbye it's a time when they're saying their last words and it's over for eternity this is the last time they'll see them no wonder mankind has such a hard time dealing with death and and the things of death. no wonder they find multitudes of things in their life to try to help them to cope with this loss Listen, even as believers, yes, there's going to be a season we're going to be separated. And yes, we're going to go through a time when we're not going to see them on this earth. But listen to me, friend. For those who know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, weeping may endure for a season in our life, but there's going to come a moment when that weeping will be stopped and it'll be replaced with joy. It's only a short time that we're going to be separated when you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 14. He says, for we believe. He's saying, I want you to, to understand this hope we have. He says, for we believe that Jesus died and he rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who fall asleep in him. Friends, this truth is a part of the gospel message. We believe that Jesus died. We've settled that fact. We believe Jesus died for our sins. 
We believe Jesus died so that you and I might go free. That's how you and I gain salvation, friend. Not through works, not through any good thing we've done. We get to heaven in Jesus Christ alone. Jesus said, I'm the gate that you have to walk through if you want to get to eternal life. It's through Jesus Christ, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we know Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. But that's not all there is to the story. Not only did Jesus die, but three days later, how many of you know he got up out of the grave? Resurrection power filled that old tomb. Something happened by the tomb that had not happened around that area. Resurrection power filled that tomb and Jesus Christ rose from the grave. So we believe that Jesus died, but we also believe that he rose from the grave. And friend, that truth alone is a great hope for the church. What a great hope for those who have died in Christ. If you believe that Jesus died, and if you believe that Jesus rose again, then you have to believe the remainder of that scripture where it says God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. Since death had no power over him, death has no power over us. It may take us by the way of the grave. One day, friend, one day we may breathe our last breath on this side. But one day, death's old hold is going to be broken and death will be swallowed up in victory for every believer in Jesus Christ. Jesus said in John 14 and verse 19, because I live, you will live also. 1 Corinthians 6 and 14. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead and he will raise us also, Philippians 3, verses 20 and 21, but our citizenship is in heaven. Could you say amen? But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that we, excuse me, so that they will be like his glorious body. What we'll experience in the rapture has everything to do with our relationship with Jesus Christ. The basis for the rapture is founded in our faith in Christ and in the Holy Scriptures. The rapture is for those who have a relationship with Jesus and know him as their Lord and Savior. So we have the scriptural basis for the rapture. Now I want us, if you will, for a few moments to look at the blueprint, the blueprint of the rapture. 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 15 through 16. According to the Lord's own word. This is not about a denominational idea in some office somewhere. This that we're talking about this morning is according to the Lord's own words. It says, we tell you, that we who are still alive, are you alive today? Say amen. amen. Are you alive? Say amen. amen. Alive and awake, two different things, isn't it? <laughs> we are alive, and so this word applies to those who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, the Lord himself, notice that, will come down from heaven with a loud command and with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Friend, he's not sending somebody else. He's coming. We are the bride of Christ he is the heavenly bridegroom, and he's coming to gather his bride from the four corners of this earth. The passage continues on and says this, he will come down from heaven with a loud command. Jesus Christ is the voice of all voices. When he gives a command, 
things happen. He gets attention. Now, when we were kids at home, my sister and I, sometimes we didn't always see eye to eye. It was a shame my sister was wrong as much as she was. But sometimes she was wrong. She's not in church today. She's on vacation, so I can say that. <laughs> and there would be times we'd have a difference of opinion. And we'd be going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, driving my parents crazy. And then finally, there would be a voice that would come through the house. It would be my father's voice. And when my father would speak, everybody stopped talking Faith and I didn't care about our opinion anymore. Dad's opinion superseded our opinion. Dad had a voice that could be heard throughout all of our arguing. Friends, the Bible says Jesus Christ is going to come and he's going to give a loud command. When he does so, he's going to get our attention. I believe that command is going to be a word to the bodies who've been waiting on the resurrection. Some have speculated that it will be similar to the event that took place in John 11 when Jesus stood in front of the tomb of Lazarus and he said in a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Someone has speculated that it's a good thing on that day that Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. Because if he would have just said, come forth, every grave would have opened up that day. Because he is the voice that everybody can hear. He's the voice that will cut through it all. He's the voice of eternity where time and space stops being as we've always known it. He is the voice that will speak. And those who've died in Christ will raise out of that grave and come to new life the lord will give the command summoning the bodies of everyone who's died in christ to immediately rise from their graves and come to life john chapter 5 verse 25 jesus said these words very truly i tell you a time is coming and now has come when the dead will hear the voice of the son of god and those who hear will live. He continues on in our passage to say, not only does he come up with a loud command, but it says, then the trumpet call of God. Trumpets have been used extensively throughout the scriptures. In the Old Testament, we find they were used as a gathering. When they wanted to gather the people together, they'd sound a trumpet. And it was a call for everybody to come together. We know that in uh, the New Testament, in the book Revelation, that trumpets are used as a means of judgment, as they sound forth judgment that will come over the earth. Friend, there's coming a day when Jesus Christ is going to gather those who've died in him. He's already given the command for them to be resurrected. Now there's going to be a trumpet call that will summon all those who are alive and are watching for the return of Jesus Christ, the command for those who've died, and the trumpet blows for those who are alive and waiting for his return. Notice the words in First, excuse me, 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 52, listen, I tell you, he says, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye. When? At the last trumpet. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. He continues on in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 16, and he says, and the dead in Christ will rise first. The graves are going to open. Their bodies are going to come up out of the ground in an instant, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. The grave is going to be robbed of its power. I've stood over the years while men and women have laid their loved ones to rest for the last time on this earth. And I have seen men and women stand by the grave and mourn. I've seen the power that the grave has over people's lives. The grave causes heartbreak. It causes hardship. It causes separation. It causes a time of grieving and sorrow. But friend, when the trumpet sounds, the grave is going to be robbed of all of its power. It's kind of like 
the grave thought it had something, and about the time it thought it had something, God is going to rob the grave of its power. Those who've been laid to rest are going to get up out of the ground. Let me tell you, I live next door to a cemetery, and it's usually pretty quiet around my house. I got a feeling it's going to be a day of commotion next door on that day. All across the world, as graves open and those who've been buried come to fresh life, like Jesus was laid in the tomb, they're going to come alive and well out of that grave. One morning, you're going to get up. And all of a sudden, you hear a trumpet sound. And suddenly, you're going to feel more alive, my friend, than you have ever felt before. And immediately, your body is going to begin to lift off from planet Earth. And as you're hurling through the sky, all of a sudden, I kind of picture myself looking to the left and the right. And I may be right there and look over, and there's going to be my daddy. I may see my grandma my grandpa. And it's not going to be a time of mourning and tears anymore. It's not going to be a time of sorrow and missing. It's going to be a time, friend, when we're going to see those who've gone. And we're together with them going to join the Lord in the air. And the Bible says, so shall we ever be with the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 17, our basis for today. After that, we are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air so we will be with the Lord forever. The Bible says we'll be caught up with them. The words caught up is where we get the, the word rapture from. Caught up together with them through time and space. We'll be caught up together with them. We're not going to be separated from them. Those who've gone ahead of us We'll miss my dad always. My dad would preach about the rapture of the church. And my dad would say, I hope that I live to see the rapture of the church. And you know what? Just a couple years ago, my dad went on to be with Jesus in heaven. But the good news is, you know, I'm still here waiting on the rapture. And if it takes place before I go the way my dad did, listen, my dad's body that we laid out there at Grant Memorial is coming back out. And we're going to join my dad. You see, my dad's going in the rapture just like I'm going in the rapture his old body we laid in the ground is coming back up just like my body's going up we're going to be together caught up friends this is a great hope for your heart this is a great hope to help you through no wonder Paul said we don't want you to be uninformed about those who have died already in Jesus Christ it's a great hope that we have Those who've died in Christ, looking forward to the blessed hope, the rapture of the church, won't miss it. For they too will join us in the air. The Bible says we'll be together with them again. And we'll be with the Lord, and I like this words, forever. 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 Think about forever. Forever. Think about no ending. You know, we get together as families, and uh, right now at uh, the end of the summer, a lot of families are getting together for family events and taking trips, and it's always good to get together, but then there always comes this time, it seems like, where uh, we have to part, and everybody kind of goes back to their homes and their own state and their own place of work, and Life kind of goes back. Listen, friends, when the rapture of the church takes place, we're going to be gathered together forever. There is going to be no more parting. 